All right, what will we play today? Persona 5, uh, that game got boring after the 500th playthrough. Oh, near Automata, the fact that everyone's horny over a robot really worries me. Ah, oh, Shin Megami Tensei 5, I don't feel like killing God today. No, I think we need to talk about RPGs. We all know about RPGs. Most of you have probably played one. Games like Final Fantasy or Elder Scrolls. The RPG genre is one of the most popular genres in gaming, and that shouldn't be a surprise. A lot of them contain beautiful stories with lots of well-written characters and fun gameplay. And then there's Fire Emblem Fates. Honestly, RPGs are my favorite genre. A lot of my favorite video games are RPGs, but that's not to say they don't have their problems. But I also want to talk about what some of them get right. In the NES and SNES era, there wasn't much in gameplay. Most RPGs at the time were pretty basic. Select an attack, choose what enemy to attack, defeat it, level up, stuff like that. I won't lie, turn-based combat like that is kinda boring to me. But I don't have to talk about those, since this video is about my favorite RPGs, so let's start talking about those. We should take a look at the PS2 for some RPGs, since they definitely had a lot. I'm sure you guys already know what my favorite RPG on the PS2 is, and yes, it's Gex, how did you know? Shin Megami Tensei 3 is honestly my favorite SMT game. Unless we can count Tokyo Mirage Sessions, then it's my second favorite. Anyway, SMT3 did a lot of things right for me. It had a good story, with entertaining characters, and some of the hardest battles I've ever experienced. Yeah, SMT is like the Dark Souls of RPGs, which on one hand, it's a neat idea, but on the other, it just doesn't work. For open world hack and slash type combat, you don't have to rely on stats and skills as much. As long as you have enough skill at the game, you can defeat bosses with little to no weapons or armor. But for an RPG, combat is usually based on your stats, and if you don't have good stats, you're gonna die a lot. And since the SMT boss fights are so hard, naturally you're gonna grind some EXP. Well, good luck with that, because in SMT3 you'll usually get one stat raise during a level up. Seriously, one stat. You can grind for almost an hour and make such small amounts of progress. A big problem with RPGs trying to make themselves difficult is that it almost forces the player to grind EXP and rely on RNG way too much. No player wants to just grind EXP for an hour just to defeat one boss fight they need to to progress the story. Unless you're that player, then I won't judge, you can do whatever you want in your video game. But luckily for us, SMT are the games Atlas usually makes really difficult. Persona 3 FES should be able to ease us into the SMT world a bit better. One Persona 3 playthrough later. Well, that, that was a lie. Persona 3 FES is just as hard, maybe harder than SMT3. It has nearly the same problems with the bosses being hard and having to grind, on top of the fact with your party members getting fatigued and you can't control them. Honestly, as much as I love Atlas and their games they make, if you aren't prepared or willing to play a hard RPG, maybe you should just stay away from some of the SMT and early Persona games. Like I described earlier, making your RPG hard is a fun idea, but it just doesn't work as well compared to games like Code Vein or Sekiro. It relies on factors that are outside of the player's control. Even though I have complaints about those games, I still really enjoy them. The PS2 has some more really good RPGs. Final Fantasy X is a great game that I come back to every once in a while, and Kingdom Hearts is also very well made. You know what we should do? We, we should talk about Fire Emblem Three Houses, because I really like it. Three Houses is my second favorite Fire Emblem, and that's because it did so many great things. Well, except for the story. That wasn't very good. But gameplay-wise, it was really good. You had a lot of customization in this game. All of your units could use pretty much every weapon type and learn any class. This meant that not everyone's playthrough would be the exact same, since you could do whatever you wanted. But if you wanted to change your units to a specific class, they had to excel at weapon types or class types. Which feels more than fair, since being able to change to any class just by using a seal would be kinda broken. One time I taught Mercedes how to use gauntlets because I thought it'd be funny if she knew how to throw hands. And that's what's great about Three Houses, it lets you do goofy stuff like that which makes the gameplay feel more freeing than any Fire Emblem game. So overall, I really like Fire Emblem Three Houses. Was that Lightning? Oh man, she's back. Lightning Returns is a game that exists. While I wasn't a huge fan of 13 and 13 Part 2, I thought Lightning Returns was really good. The combat is a mix of hack and slash and turn-based. 
You can do basic attacks and block, but those take away juice from your little juice bar down here. Combat can get difficult, but it's important to strategize in each battle. You could throw out a bunch of ice attacks to stun your enemy, or you could play defensive and block and wait for an opening to deal a bunch of damage. Honestly, Lightning Returns has a very good combat system. It dabbles in needing good stats to defeat enemies faster, while at the same time not having to fully rely on them since your skill level is also a factor. Everything I just said also applies to games like Persona 5 Scramble and Nier Automata. Speaking of Nier Automata, to people who pronounce it Nier Automata, why? Just... <laughs> just why? While I love Lightning Returns, I do have some complaints. During battles, you have three different outfits that can change your attacks. Like I said before, attacking and blocking drains your stamina, and it will require you to wait for it to refill. I remember a few times during combat, I was just standing around and waiting for my stamina to recharge since I spent it all. Along with that, you're on a time crunch. The plot revolves around you saving people's soul and allowing them to be reborn after the end of the world. The more souls you save, the longer you have until the end of the world. It's honestly pretty cool. The game runs on an internal clock, and you have 24 in-game hours to progress the story or finish side quests until you're forced to return back to your base and deposit the souls you saved. Once again, I really like this idea, but it gets stressful knowing you may not have time to do everything you wanted or need to in one day. Some activities are only available at certain times too. I'm usually able to finish everything I need to do during those 24 hours, but there have been times where I felt like I needed more time. Another great RPG is Yakuza Like a Dragon. Unlike the other Yakuza games, Like a Dragon is a turn-based RPG. It does a good job of keeping the combat interactive, since some of the attacks make you push a button at the right time, or make you mash buttons. It also does a good job of making sure you can traverse the menus efficiently. If you attack an enemy, sometimes they'll fall and stay on the ground for a short amount of time. During that period of time, you can deal some bonus damage if you attack while they're on the ground. This forces you to learn where your skills and items are located so you can quickly navigate to them. This is also important in games like Lightning Returns and Nier Automata, but I felt like it was the most prominent in Yakuza Like a Dragon. Before I talk about the last game, I'll just throw out some honorable mentions. Fire Emblem Warriors is just a really fun mindless hack and slash that had a lot of characters and maps to play. If you ever just want to mash the X and Y button, this is the game for you. Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga is genuinely my favorite Mario game since it shakes up the RPG formula in an interesting way. You have a lot of cool abilities, like the bro attacks and hammer attacks. I never made it very far in Code Vein, but I still enjoyed the boss fights and the characters. You have plenty of options for weapons, and you can even make your main character wear nothing but a towel. I, I don't know, I just thought it was funny. There was a game I mentioned a while back in my 10 underrated games video called Valkyria Chronicles 4. It's a lot like Fire Emblem since you can move your units and make use of the surrounding environment. There are plenty of classes and skills which makes the gameplay very fun. Unlike the first game, this one doesn't have any difficulty spikes, which I kinda found to be a problem in the first game. It's kinda like if you just got an ice cream cone and someone walked up to you and slapped it out of your hand and said, now go kill 16 enemy soldiers. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. In current times, most games try to innovate and add new features as the game goes along. Look at Persona 5. It continuously adds new attacks and options to combat to keep it fresh. Things like Showtime attacks and all the technical damage and ailments are just fun to mess around with. Or like how Tokyo Mirage Session's main mechanic is to do a session attack and pile on as much damage as possible by capitalizing on weaknesses. I know some people still prefer the classic RPG gameplay, and I just have one thing to tell those people. You're the reason Dragon Quest XI has a 2D mode.